What's up, YouTube? Explosive Movement Patterns here. This video today, what we're looking at is how to jump higher. Pretty simple topic, and this isn't going to go over all the things that you need to do to be able to jump higher. This is really more of just some specific exercises that I do that will help you increase your RFD, your rate of force development, because really, that's the name of the game when it comes to jumping higher, running faster, how much force you can produce, and how fast you can produce that force. Now, when you look at a lot of myths going around, or not myths, but a lot of uh, things that people say is you gotta have just about one and a half times your body weight before continuing plyometrics, or you know you want to focus on more plyometrics and weights, more weights and plyometrics. Really, it all become comes down to your personal preference of what you need for you. Some athletes can get by without lifting weights. Some athletes can just get by with doing some plyos, jumping around, and they'll get 40 inch vert just like that. Some guys need to do a lot of strength work, and then that gets them above it. Some guys need a combination of both. Me personally, I like to do a combination of both. And in this video specifically, what I'm going to be talking about is certain plyometric exercises that I do. And I'm a track and field athlete, and I'm a football athlete. So what do I do to jump higher? Well, one thing I do is depth jumps. Depth jumps where basically you drop off a box or an elevated height that's right around your vertical leap. If you're a beginner, you definitely want to start low. You hit the ground, and boom, you rebound right back up. This is probably the single best plyometric exercise you can do when it comes to uh, increasing your vertical leap. If I had to pick one exercise to increase my vertical leap width, and that's the only exercise I could do, it would definitely be depth jumps. Just the uh, rate of force development, you know, the, the, the elastic ability you develop is just incredible with this exercise. It's really great. Um, I would not recommend doing more than 10 at a time in a single set. Uh, I would not recommend doing more than like 40 to 50 reps in a single session, and you're definitely going to need a lot of time to recover in between sets and also in between workouts if you're doing these. Uh, but once again, it's a great thing to do, a great workout to use, and it's something that I use personally uh, at least once a week to develop explosiveness and vertical leap ability. Now moving on, another exercise I do, which can help you vertical, help you run faster, you know, pretty much whole nine yards, is single leg bounding. Uh, this is an incredible exercise because if you can get strong off one leg, if you combine two legs, you're going to be even stronger. And when you think about it, sprinting, it's uh, a lot of power on each leg, and I'm also a triple jumper, so pretty basic too. Like Triple jumper, a lot of power goes on each single leg, and it's going to help you out a lot in that. But make sure before you do this, you progress from regular alternating leg bounds and sprint bounding into single leg bounds. And these are the two exercises that I was doing for this workout. And uh, they're both really good exercises, but like I said, I would recommend that you supplement plyometrics along with weightlifting. And a lot of mistakes people make is that they want to hit plyometric reps right after another, but a rule you need to follow is the 1 to 5 rule, which basically means for every 1 second that you're doing a plyometric activity, you need at least 5 seconds of rest. So if, you know, a set of depth jumps takes 30 seconds, I'm going to need 150 seconds of rest. That's, you know, almost, that's uh, two and a half minutes. And that's at the very least, but honestly, with depth jumps, you probably need more time just because how intense they are. And like I said, I would recommend supplementing plyometrics weights. And obviously, um, if you're a beginner and you start doing these, I would definitely not. I would start off by doing depth drops where you just drop down and you just land to make sure you have a soft landing. And you have to work on your body control, your mobility, and you have to be at least at an intermediate level to start doing depth jumps and to start doing single leg bounds. But if you are at that level and you are looking for something that will help your explosiveness, help your vertical leap, this is a, these are great exercises and they will help you out so much. So much. I mean, just the force you develop and the elastic ability that you're able to develop with these exercises is great. Um, if you're an athlete and you're not doing these, I would definitely recommend putting them in because they're just incredible exercises. Uh, future videos coming along the way, I'll talk more about increasing vertical leap, increasing explosive power, and uh, how to train. Um, thanks for watching this video, guys. Explosive movement patterns. Signing off. See you.